Hello, everybody. My name is Guillermo Garcia Manero from MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston. I'm very happy to be here today at the uh, ASH meeting in San Diego, uh, hosting this uh, roundtable for uh, blood cancers today with my colleagues from uh, New Jersey, LA, and, and Miami. We're going to be discussing topics related to malodysplastic syndrome. Hi, I'm Jamie Kaprivnikar. I'm from the John Thur Cancer Center at Hackensack University Medical Center. It's a pleasure to be here today. I'm uh, George Yagmore. I'm uh, the Associate Director of the Transplant Program at USC Los Angeles. Genuinely honored to join you today for this discussion. I'm Sangeeta Venugopal from the Sylvester Cancer Center, University of Miami. So let's start uh, talking about some of the other uh, uh, compounds and interventions. So let's start with the, f uh, the, the first one that is maybe imetalstat, the uh, presumed telomerase inhibitor. What are your takes on this, this IMERT study? Well, I mean, the, uh, our colleague Zaidan presented in ASCO the data of the IMERS study, randomized control study for patient, also uh, refractory or they exposed to erythropoietin stimulant agent, and the data are very much encouraging, and uh, the also response rate and the tolerability of the treatment in low risk MDS also made me think from that uh, data that, okay, now command study are moving lispect receptor up front. So now what about uh, the telomerase inhibitor? If we feel lispect receptor is gonna be our new practice to switch those patients, or should we combine it at some point if they fail? What do you think? You know, I think the data is really interesting. Um, I do think, you know, we haven't had a good option for patients with a serum EPO level greater than 500, but it looks like maybe Imtelostat may fill that need. Um, and also, you know, sort of response rates across the MIPSS groups tend to be very even regardless of the risk stratification with Imtelostat. So I thought that that was very interesting. Do you have any issues with the degree of neutropenia, thrombocytopenia, and the time it takes for this drug to give your response. Do you think that's going to be problematic in the clinic? or I do think with worsening cytopenias that we may see some difficulties. Um, certainly that was reported as part of the, the you know, abstract here. So that is, you know, I think a, a consideration and a concern for some patients. I do agree. I, I, I forgot to mention cytopenia might be a challenge, but at the end, you know, it's also the balance and the uh, it is going to be case by case decision. And then the other compound, I think, of very significant interest, and it tells you how fast things uh, go, is that uh, apparently there is already a kind of, I mean, I don't know if this is the proper term, but let's say a second generation TGF beta modulator, this compound CARE 050. This was presented last year, uh, well, not last year, this past IHA. It also feels like last year to me already. But uh, so what are your takes on this? Do you think that? A uh, drug like that could have a role or, you know, it's actually quite fascinating, right? Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but, you know, we were just talking about Imtelostat having these issues with cytopenias. I believe with this agent, we actually saw some platelet responses. So I think that's really interesting. And also some signals that it's maybe modulating inflammation, some decreasing ferritins. Um, so I think, there are, you know, this is one of the many very exciting therapies coming down the pike. I understand that this drug actually is somehow similar to a compound known as Sotarcetept, was developing parallel to the Luspatercept. So I'm not sure if it has some type of chemical modification or, or not, but uh, it's really intriguing that we'll have a drug working kind of the same pathway. And I think at the end, these are all good news, right? Because, you know, Shangita was talking about, you know, uh, Del5Q minus, not knowing. But now the reality is that as we uh, develop these drugs and get them approved, we come with kind of new needs, right? And one need is like, okay, you get this great drug, loose patterns, but now you are not responding anymore. What do I do after that? So it's gonna be interesting to see if these drugs will have a second, you know, a place as a second line, post loose power, post ESA, depending on what, what you do. And as you're saying, should we combine them? and maybe understand what is the true molecular context where these drugs work better. Uh, you know, perhaps they are not all the same for all patients with lower risk uh, MDS, going back to this molecular heterogeneity that we have. Uh, I concur about that uh, targeting the activine uh, type 2 receptor, targeting the uh, SMAD pathway and regulator of the inflammatory process that helps in the platelets recovery, honestly from the phase 2 data, 
that's uh, coming this ash also they're going to update us about it it's exciting and very much uh, promising additional option and new generation of uh, transforming gross factors uh, pathway inhibitor